All right, it is time to check out some pretty intense, pretty introspective, pretty, uh, pretty album. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really have too much else for this intro, so let's just dive into it. No the Beggar by Swans. So, Swans is a band. <laughs> um, yeah, they are uh, a pretty intense, like, experimental art rock band. I really got into them with the Three Punch of the Seer, To Be Kind, and uh, The Glowing Man, uh, and just really fell in love with that kind of very aggressive, introspective, very challenging music. I really enjoyed Leaving Meaning, you know, their album from 2019. I thought that it was a little bit of a step back from The Glowing Man, um, but, you know, it tackled a lot of very difficult uh, issues. The whole, you know, leaving a legacy, what are you leaving behind when you die? And I feel as though The Beggar is kind of continuing that idea, uh, but less so in like what happens when we die uh, in terms of like, you know, for those who still remain and for a life that carries on. And more of like coming to terms with the inevitability of death. And I mean, I have a panic attack once a year about that. So this album, it, it hit me pretty hard a number of times when I was listening to this. One of the things that I immediately found with this particular album, we're back to a double disc, you know, Leaving Meaning was a single disc, whereas I think a lot of their other albums were a double disc well into the two hour marks. We're back at the two hour mark with a double disc and, um, immediately I felt as though this album is a little bit more accessible. It's a little bit less bombastic and a little bit less droney as some of their past albums were. And it's it's kind of reminding me of, you know, some of their much more early stuff, you know, like um, Soundtrack for the Blind or Children of God with less of the experimental and less of the intense aspects of it. I mean, that's still here, but it's a little bit buried. There's a lot more... I hate to say it with a Swans album, but like very pleasant passages. The buildups are very pleasant, um, and we're seeing that on like the Paradise is Mine and Los Angeles City of Death, even within the title track of The Beggar, where there's like this this very infectious and inviting sound. You know, it's not like some of the past albums where it's like sit you down and challenge you on things. This is more of like inviting you in and having a conversation. I really love the fourth track of Michael is Done. And, you know, my name, my given name being Michael, uh, I was feeling very called out on that. And I do know that the lead singer and songwriter is also named Michael. So it's definitely more of an introspective thing rather than a, hey, this this be you. I'm loving how you caught this kind of opening sequence of, you know, Michael is done. Michael is all these different things. Uh, and then we get into this longer stretch of actual like playthrough music that I find very pleasant uh, and very inviting. And then we get to the closing piece where we get back into that. So it's, it's very interesting. Um, and another track, you know, and a lot of these tracks are also very long winded, you know, ebbing being 11 minutes, uh, having a lot of that ebbing and flowing. Uh, and it, it still has a lot of that, like very challenging, very, uh, self-reflective, almost self-destructive uh, thoughts as well. Uh, and that's found on the last track of why can't I have any, what, why can't I have what I want anytime I want it? And that was the first disc. And I really do enjoy the first disc of this album. Again, uh, for Swan's album, this is a much more inviting album. It's a little bit more of a conversation piece instead of somebody sitting in the corner writing poetry and writing themselves into a panic attack and a downward spiral. This one is much more of a discussion. It's a little bit more of a give and take. That can't necessarily be said about the second disc of this album. And what really invited me to the album to begin with is the the Beggar Lover 3, which is a 43 minute and 51 second track. And you know me, I'm a prog lover. I, um, I set my whole channel up as being a celebration for prog music. So when I see a single track at 43 minutes, I get excited. You know, I'm like, I, I've been raised for this. This is my kind of music. This is the kind of music that I can talk about. I have a lot of thoughts about it. And, ha. <laughs> um, for a 43 minute track, 
there's not a whole lot to actually talk about. I feel as though this is a clip show for a show that I've never seen. You know, like there there are definitely moments on here that go back into the past catalog, especially with uh, The Running Man, especially with, uh, sorry, especially with The Glowing Man, especially with Leaving Meaning, a few from To Be Kind, a little bit from The Seer. So like there's, there's motifs and moments on here that stretch back into the past, but uh, I feel as though this is much more of a train of thought style of music, very similar to like the train of thought writing style that was very popular in like the 30s and 40s. Like I'm thinking of Lucky's big uh, uh, monologue in Waiting for Godot, where it's just this bleh, uh, without any real rhyme or reason, like none of the motifs or things that are put down at the beginning or middle of this uh, track ever get reprised. There's no, for my ears, rhyme or reason, and it just feels as though we're going from one passage to another passage to another passage without any real rhyme or reason. I can see myself returning to this when I you know, start reading some of the, the particular literature that I really love diving into. I can see this being the soundtrack for some of that. And there are moments on here that I really do enjoy. And you know, there are, there are moments on here that I'm like, okay, I can see some of the ideas that you're putting down. I'm seeing some of the ideas that you're trying to play with on this this aspect. But I would have really liked to see at least a little bit of, I don't know, reasoning. A little bit of setup and payoff on this. Um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be planting of the seeds or leading you by the mouth kind of an idea. But I would at least like to have some kind of a reason for me to stick around for the 43 minutes. And I don't really feel that as much. There's one moment, though, that I do want to call out. Um, there was somebody on TikTok back in uh, at, around Christmas that she was pronouncing and singing every letter of the alphabet or every every like consonant and and like phoneme of what a wonderful world but she would only do it like one letter at a time like only pronounce the t's only pronounce the j's only pronounce the th's or the 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 ch's and there's a moment on this track that reminds me of that exercise that coming back to her channel every day to see how the track actually develops and actually sounded like you know, and I think that would have been a really interesting exercise if they tried to do something very similar to that, because it does sound like it's just like, uh, e, e, t, k, right? Uh, and then slowly build up at least one bar or measure or meter. But instead, it's just kind of an interesting soundscape, interesting experiment. And at the end of the day, the second disc feels much more of like that kind of an experimentation rather than an experimentation that has been tried and then polished off and then realized later on. So, yeah, I mean, I'll come back to the second disc, I think, more than a lot of other people will, but it won't be necessarily to sit down and listen to it. It'll be to have on the background while I need this kind of music in the background. And then the final track on the album and the final track on the second disc, the second track of Memorius, it's fine. You know, it kind of feels like a, all right, we need something to wrap all this up with, and we don't quite know how to wrap it up from that big song, so let's just put a nice bow out on it at the end. So, yeah, in the end, The Beggar was, uh, on the one hand, it was a little bit frustrating, um, especially from a band that I love with The Seer, with To Be Kind, with The Glowing Man, you know, those three big albums that I just friggin' love. Seeing progression from there and seeing a little bit of like where they're going from here especially after leaving meaning which was a little bit underwhelming uh but there were still moments on it that i still enjoyed i feel like the beggar is an improvement from leaving meaning it's a little bit more uh tangible in that sense as i mentioned it's a little bit more of an inviting atmosphere but when you actually do get in you know you served your tea you served your scones and you're actually having that conversation with the person it's a little bit of a, a, a frustrating conversation because it's a little one-sided. You know, you're invited. The atmosphere is, you know, the vibes are good, but there's, there's. I'm still waiting for something of a little bit more substance. I'm waiting for something, you know, with those those big um, crescendos, those big uh, resolutions of some of these bigger songs. I'm not quite feeling it on the same extent that I have on past records. That being said, it was still a record that I enjoyed. It was one that I spent a lot of time with, and I will continue to spend time with. And I had a, I had a really good time with it. It was just a little bit on the frustrating side. So I will say at the end, The Beggar by Swans is still one that I will ultimately download.
you know, this is still a good addition to their catalog. Not their best, not their weakest. It's it's a good exploration of where, you know, Michael and the rest of the band is currently at this time, especially dealing with mortality and dealing with the inevitability of death, which is great. So that's my thought on The Beggar from Swans. What do you guys think about this album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below. And that's all I got from you guys today. That's all I've got. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.